Hey, can one of you guys do me a favor? Go ahead. Can you, can you look, look at my right. profile and see what I'm, I'm, I'm signed in at under the email? I'm having a problem with my phone. Oh. Are you talking about in a vet hall? No, on the Zoom meeting. I, I keep I keep having problems. The last two I haven't even been able to sign into. I see Lane. But like if you right click on it and it says view profile, can you tell me what that email says? Uh okay, sure, sure. Make host, put rain room, remove report. Uh don't let me view your profile. Let me check this other one. And now I'm getting report, remove, put in waiting room, rename, make co-host, pin chat. That's pretty much it. Okay. You probably can't because you're one of the ones hosting it. Yeah. All right. We are live. Woo. Welcome in, everybody. Um, today, we're going to be talking about uh, just different uh, technology, different things uh, you can do to, uh, you know, boost your business, different things uh, you guys have done to help uh, grow your business and different things we've done, right? Like, um, yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and get things started. Um, I was talking to a, uh, the whole team and we were, I was like, what is the number one thing, you know, because we're in event hawk here, right? So we have our own software. So I was like, what is one thing minus event hawk? that every bounce house business owner needs to have, right? The technology wise. And everyone agreed a booking software, right? It is an absolute must. It's a booking software and inventory management software. Those were like numbers one and two. Um, I know we work a lot with IO, right? And it is the, it is just that. It is a booking software, inventory management software, helps build websites. Um, anybody else want to share experiences either with IO or their, their booking software, right? That you use, right? All right. Uh, all the other ones out there, I know there's, um, you know, ERS, BCN, right? There's yeah, their customer these. service sucks. So <laughs> if you want to, yeah, I'm telling you, they have horrible customer service. But if you, if you sign up for it, um, Event Hawk is awesome service as far as helping you guys out with it. So, I mean, I probably wouldn't have uh, signed up for it if I didn't have like Event Hawk help me out a little bit. There's some really awesome people over there that really know the software pretty good or go hands on more with you than um, Inflatable Office will. I don't know what the problem is with Inflatable Office, but uh, Event Hawk definitely knows that software. And I highly recommend if you're going to get it, they know how to like work that software and get it up and going for you. So, I mean, I joined up with them. I think maybe now it's been about like three months. And it's really uh, helped out a lot. So um highly recommend it. So hey Brandon, can you can you um detail that? Can you say more on that? On uh, on what exactly? What Ray just said. Can you explain more? Yeah, so with, with like with the Vet Hawk, right? We we use inflatable office a hand in hand, right? We have a whole team, a website team that's dedicated. Uh, to working with inflatable office, building websites, using the software, uh, right? We have, and we just grew the team, right? Even more, so we have even more people um, working in that team because we know that's one of the most important things here at Event Hawk is like that, that software and working with it. So we have a lot of people that work with that software all day, every day. So we we know a lot about it. We do a lot with it, right? Zoel is one of those people, right? She can actually explain a little bit more um, kind of how how it all works a little bit. Yeah, sure. So I actually, for Event Hawk, I do some of the growth strategist calls, but my other role there is actually to help people um, a little bit with inflatable office and Event Hawk and how to use them hand in hand to actually get more bookings. Because you can get an incredible software like Event Hawk or like inflatable office, but if you're not sure how to work it. It could kind of be useless to you. So um, that's part of my role over there. Um, inflatable office. A lot of people seem to get pretty intimidated because it is a lot. There's there's a lot of settings. There's a lot of different things. But and I understand Ray has had uh, different experience, but I've had an awesome experience with their customer service personally. Um, anytime I need, and granted, this I also have good experience because I am under Tariq and he does help me out a lot. So I do get you know firsthand help from him. So putting that aside, though, every time I email them, if I email them almost once a week at least about different issues we're having or hey is it possible that I can do x y and z I'll email them and they'll usually get back to me within the day by the latest the next day and oh, I never get that that's crazy within a day 
We, well, I mean, usually yeah, sometimes the next day, but oh, yeah. You email them from Event Hawk though, right? No, I email them straight. Well, I'll email them straight from uh, our normal email. So um, that it has a Event Hawk on it, or no, it's uh, it's just like a bounce my house Gmail account. So they I they answer us so pretty many quickly. Problems. I don't know. Yeah, that's frustrating. I mean, it is super hard to hear, you know, like my side of things where I'm having a great experience and they get back to me right away. Um, but it seems like Ray has had the opposite experience. So it's kind of hard to go, you know, based off of two different extremes there. Um, but I would say, you know, we've been kind of fortunate that when they do answer, um, they usually can can help us with the problem. And um, if not, then they'll link an article for me to read or link a video for me to watch, or they'll even record a video right then and there and send it my way. So I've been fortunate enough to have a great experience with them. Um, and, and just like I mentioned earlier, if you are someone that's with Event Hawk um, and, and you're needing some more help with Inflatable Office and Event Hawk um, together, I can always, I'm more than happy to set up a call with you and help you out. And it will definitely get your sales uh, quotes up. So like if your bounce house is, let's say like 150, you can get, you can, you know, add on another 50. And I haven't had any problems like with my basic bouncers, you know, probably like three months ago, I was only charging like 150 and then I upped it to like uh, 200. And then I also have a little delivery charge on there. So, you know, we're looking at um, an extra, usually 75, sometimes even more, depending on the distance on where I'm traveling for it. So it's definitely worthwhile because uh, it, it'll charge them whatever for the distance charge or the mile, however you put that into the uh, system. So it's a nice way to up your uh, ticket costs because it could just go on there at any time of the night. So if you don't have a, a rental system, it's totally crazy on why you wouldn't because they could basically book any time of the day of the night. You know, you just send them over to the website and they just go on there and book. And that's what I just want people to do. I just want to drop the stuff off. I don't want to tell them a story. Like if you want it, you go online, you book it. Let's be done. I'll bring you your happy bounce house and, you know, drop it off. And it works out really good though. So I highly recommend it. And um, about a month ago or two months ago, we were just on this, and they uh, had us connect the Google Calendar, which is friggin' awesome. So I love that idea. Everything just gets converted right over to the calendar. So it makes my job so much more easier. I can just open up my calendar and see what I got booked, see if they paid. Well, I don't I don't see uh, like where they pay later. So you have option on there. I haven't had any issues where customers will just pay the whole thing up front. I don't want to have to like chase them down later or whatever. So I highly recommend just having them pay the whole thing. I've had like one customer so far at, didn't want to pay it. And I was like, well, I guess I'm not going to rent to you. So I just want to keep everything on there so I could see my sales and everything that's going on. I don't be dropping up mega bounce houses because that's all I deal with now is mega stuff. Um, and it just makes it easier. I know they're getting it. And they signed your contract too right online, which is awesome. So you don't have to worry about any of that, you know, pen and paper stuff anymore. You'll save on all that and just time and the headache of, you know, trying to sell somebody something. So if they want it, they know how to go online today. People buy thousands and millions of dollars worth of stuff on Amazon. So it's no yeah. different, really. So I know I definitely recommend it. <laughs> well, you, you touched on something actually is the Google Calendar, right? Actually, that, I, that was going to be one of the things I was going to ask later on. But like you since you already mentioned it, absolutely. Who here uses their Google Calendar? Because um, if you didn't know, uh, if you have inflatable office, I'm not sure how ERS and BCN and all the other ones work. But I know with inflatable office, you can integrate your calendar with all this stuff. And you can code it. I just learned from our, our website team to make it show everything pretty much, right? right. So syncing with your Google Calendar for your, like for your employees. So this way your employees, all they have to do is log into their Google Calendar and it will show everything in their calendar. Like it'll have the name, the address, what the, what that thing they're picking up is, right? You can, uh, yeah, it's all customizable. It's really cool. I was, uh, I just learned that from uh, the team today actually because i was asking about it yeah that's a lot though like so like event hawk actually we had a meeting on here one time and um there was oh the, one of the girls actually showed everybody on how to do it and put it all together so if anybody has a problem like i think event hawk is still offering that service so they would show you how to do it so i would highly recommend reaching out to them because it is a little bit difficult at first on how to do it all so <laughs> yeah it can be absolutely right yeah um, but yeah, once you, once it's integrated, it's honestly, it's, oh, it's, it's amazing. Great. It's great. I love it. Absolutely. Anybody, Hello, you, everyone. What was that? This is, uh, yeah, this is Tamajo. I just came in. Hi, Brandon. I would like to ask a question. Do you know click funnels? Do I know click followers? No, click funnel, click funnels. 
click funnel. Oh, you talk about um like the uh pop -up. Yeah. No, no, no. Click funnel. It's a software. Oh no, I don't know it. What is it? I think I think Derek should know about it. So I just wanted to ask if it's possible if it's like uh, good for someone to use click funnels, build this website, the funnel, and to promote the business like. That's Same right. like in Google Office. I thought you know about it. Brandon, I've actually used ClickFunnels. Um, ClickFunnels is, it's kind of a generic term that somebody has coined into a business phrase. The idea is when you drive them there to your site with ads, um, that it's called a funnel because you start off large and then you narrow down to basically people that are qualified that want your product. So okay. obviously, you know, you want to send people to your site that are interested. And then as you go, and this will work with any product, um, you want to find out if it's actually something for them. So um, I'll just use something random like shoes, for example. So if you're selling running shoes, um, first thing you're going to do is you're going to target people that are looking for shoes. And then you want to find people that are looking for athletic wear type stuff. And then, you know, you want to make sure that, well, they're actually in the range of my target customer. Am I targeting females that, are, you know, have lots of money, that kind of thing, because I'm selling $400 pair of shoes. And so as you do that, you just narrow it down and narrow it down and narrow it down until, yeah. you know, you've got probably 20%, hopefully, a turnover rate from your ads. That That's the idea of a click funnel. But somebody has coined that and actually made an entire business based on that. And I think that's what he's asking about. Yes, yeah, so I'm asking if it's possible to run your business like, as if you were on a uh, inflatable office, if it's possible to use click funnels to build your website like on inflatable office. Oh, I'm not sure. Not gonna lie. I wouldn't use it. Yeah, because it's something that most e-commerce uh, e-commerce people they use it a lot. To do their drop shipping, their affiliate marketing, they use it a lot. So I don't know if we can use it for a party rental business. You haven't. So I thought I thought any of you had ever used it. As I'm asking. You haven't joined a Van Hawk for the uh, where they do the Google and do um the uh, Facebook ads for you. You asking if I had joined? Yeah, have you joined a Van Hawk where they do they run your Google ads and do the Facebook um ads for you? No, no, I've never attended a session like that, no. Oh, well, maybe you should talk to somebody over there and join. It's only like 30 bucks every time you make a sale off a of bounce house. Just if you're worried about the $30 and just put your bounce house prices up a little bit more and that offset that, I would definitely uh, talk to somebody over at Event Hawk about joining up. Yeah, okay. that, that would kind of be like the first part of a click funnel where they drive you into the the actual viewing of the stuff. And I, like I said, I don't know how their software is set up, so I can't answer for them. I, I don't know. But I do know that if what you're looking for is basically a qualification setup, that's where you would start is they would have to run ads somewhere to drive them to your site. So that's, he's right. That's where I'd start. Yeah, we have we have a Facebook ads team, a Google ads team, um, right? We And you know, everything in between. We also do SEO work. It's uh, only thirty bucks, right? For the uh, every time you run out of, uh, an item off of SEO, um, off of um, inflatable yeah, office website. Yeah, the the paper booking program, right? Yeah, yeah, right? absolutely. I mean, that's, yeah, that's lot. not bad we, at all, man. Yeah, we have a lot, right? So we do yeah. a lot of things out of that hog, and we help. We we love helping business owners grow their business. Yeah, because I'm okay. part of both on there, so I would I would highly suggest signing up for it so it's not too bad it's pretty good service okay okay so we talked to, we got we got booking softwares down does who else if they don't use a van hawk uses a pop-up right or some type of funnel to to like get people into their website right anybody else like i know for for a van hawk we use uh the pop-up and the way we do it is like it pops up on their screen they click it they fill out their name email phone number and boom they get uh you know, a coupon at the very end, right? Does anybody else use uh, any other type of pop-up or make their own type of funnel, maybe like a form to, to get business? Anybody uses QR codes? I know QR codes are super popular right now. I, I used, used to do pop-up shops. I used to set up at pop-up shops. A pop-up shop? Yeah. 
Oh, that's awesome. Please tell me, tell us more about that. Uh, so they'll rent out uh, event space, and it'll be a lot of different business owners that got their own small businesses that's okay. trying to grow. And I'll take an inflatable and blow it up because most of the times they, you know, they bring their kids. <laughs> that's at the malls, right? You do that at the malls or no? No, that'd be like different events. So they do them, like in Chicago, they do them a lot um, for like uh, vendors that sell clothes, jewelry, like different other things. So I, I go to the pop-up rent, shop and- rent the parking lots, right? Yeah. 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 So how does, how does that affect you as far as your insurance goes? I mean, I, I always, when I do it that way, I make them sign a contract. The parent has to sign a contract in order to get into my inflatable. Oh. And that's even with my, my rentals. So I, I have a personal contract uh, that's basically saying, you're renting this, this is yours at the moment. Um, You're responsible for anything that happened, damages or anything that happens to my equipment. So them kids are your responsibility. But does your you insurance know, still cover that? Yeah. Okay. I'll check that out. It's just a it's just a better way to get get out instead of just the internet. A lot of people, you got to understand. A lot of people really don't be into the internet or don't know how to operate it. Just be careful. You should anytime that you do any kind of event like that or a big event, you should call your insurance company up and have your name put on to put it, like whatever event that you're at. Your name should their name should be on the bottom of that policy too because the insurance company. Might say, hey, we didn't have any, we didn't know that you were going to be at that building or that place. So, I, anytime that I do any kind of event, I work with Event Helper and I can just go in and change uh, names and I change the names all the time. So, I have that certificate showing that, hey, I have it at, at this building, that building, at the mall, at the, you know, outside parking lot, whatever it might be. I would just put that address on the bottom of my uh, policy as well. So, just make sure, you know, you call your insurance company and make sure you get a, it, 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 correct so you don't get screwed in the long run in case something ever did happen okay okay ryan uh, ray mr ray so um do you pay for for that particular day that you have the event no no so some some insurance company do that with event helper they don't so i just paid like a flat i pay like uh i forget what what it is um but you just pay one time and then um yeah be careful but you can actually offset that to the uh client so anytime one of my clients asks for them to be named additional insurer onto the policy, I automatically charge $100. But it really doesn't cost me anything. But in the long run, if you think about it, it does because I have to pay for that insurance policy. So right. I'm just paying. They're just helping me pay for my insurance policy, basically, when I charge an extra 100 bucks for it. So I feel like they should be paying since, you know, I'm not the one going to the park or whatever. So um, you can charge whatever you want. Though. There's other companies out there that charge way more. So, so, I told you know about it. Brandon, I've actually used ClickFunnels. Out there that way more. So, so, I'll tell you more about it. Sorry about that. My Facebook is up on the other side. My I, I didn't hear you. What you say? <laughs> oh, so if you guys were wondering too about like another um thing as far as like uh trying to get like uh, more business you guys can do google maps you know um get like reviews on there um they've just changed it up uh maybe within the last couple of years it's under a different um software I'm trying to yeah it's called google maps and that's how you find the business my business thing i don't know if you uh, you probably can't see it but um it's like a, a little no, colorful, colorful icon and it's called google maps and then you're going to go to the bottom of it and on the bottom of it is where it would have like all the different tabs and they're just going to click on my business. And then you're going to want to add your business, like all your information, your name, your address. They might ask for an EI number. They might ask for like a video, um, you know, the whole entire like shebang. So um, just, you know, make sure you put that together and uh, you should be able to get a lot of business maybe from off just that um, Google profile thing. I've been having issues with it though. So. And reviews are key on that. I've, I've had to go through that with my other business and I learned once you get like five reviews, Google will start suggesting you to more people. And then I think it's uh, 10 reviews and then 25 and then 50. So basically you work your way up and the better your reviews are, the more likely they are to suggest you. Exactly. Yeah. 
literally that, that was gonna be one of my talking points was like Google reviews. Like that's literally one of the biggest things. Like getting on Google number one, right? Having that Google business profile because that alone will bring people in, right? And then being a good, a highly rated business, right? Having uh four to five star reviews, a lot of them, the more the better, right? Um, and yeah, and honestly, the more reviews people see, the, the more people like it, right? And especially yeah. as a, oh, and one thing I I did learn from the Google team, y'all, when you're when you get reviews, good or bad, respond, right? Respond to the review on like with your your profile as a business, right? If it was a good experience, thank them, let them know, you know, you're happy happy they came through. If it was bad, ask them, you know, what they could do, what you could do better, what happened, all anything, right? But on Google, so this way. It uh, you know, Google actually will see that and be like, oh, okay, and then start recommending you more and more. Hey, Brandon, have you ever had to? Thank you, Brandon. Have you ever had to delete like false ones? Because I've had several where they have the wrong business and they're talking about us, and it's like that that wasn't even us, you know? Like, how how do you handle that? Do you know? It's hard because that you have to go through the appeal process in Google, and that takes a long time. Okay. Yeah, cause it just take and it only takes a long time because they take a long time to get back, right? Uh, get back to you because uh, they have to they 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 look into it. You have to send them like there's it's a lot. It's a I when I first started at Event Hawk like a year ago, I had a person who actually had another business sabotage their Google profile, and they hired people to give them like over like fifty one star reviews. Right? Wow, it was nuts. I was like, how? Why? Right? And, and so the, the person lost their Google business profile that had like 80, 90 plus five star reviews because they were sabotaged. Right. And then, and I was asking, I'm like, so what do you do with that? Like I'm new. What do you do? They said, yes, it is Evo pro max. Yes. Um, what they had to go through an appeal process. They had to go through an appeal process through Google. And when I talked to them last they were in like month, like the second month of it. Um, and Google just keeps asking questions and I don't know if it ever got resolved, but yeah. Yeah. It's, I, yeah. I know you go through an appeal process with Google. That's, that is what I do know, especially with that. Yeah. Oh my God. You could also, you could respond on, on your, on your profile like, and say, this is not my business. Could you please, like, you could ask the person politely, right? But like, Hey, I noticed actually the business you want, like, give them a link, link them oh there to the other business profile. Be like, actually what you want to do, right? <laughs> that's what I, that's what I would do. I like that. That's clever. <laughs> well who here does anybody here do email marketing like at all you did for me event oh, hopping for me they put together one i hate doing all that stuff you, you helped me out with that <laughs> yes sir yes sir about to say, i've done a few email marketing uh blast myself um anybody else do any form of email marketing um, uh mr brandon i would love to do that yeah because i see a lot on my email popping up like crazy I would like mine to be there too. So how do I, what do I do? Any links so I can link to you later? Absolutely. You can speak to it. Please. A yes, ma'am. Of course. Right. Um, Zoel can, uh, I'll help, can help help you out here. Get the inner information. We'll get her, we'll get you. We got you. We'll, uh, we'll set you up with a meeting later. But what you can do if you have the event hub software, if anybody here has it or high or level, high level. I'm, not sure how, I'm not sure how or, or BCN works with their email marketing. Um, but in the, the go high level um, and event hawk software, it's actually a, its own tab, right? So you log in to your software and you just click email marketing. And from there, you can start building an email. Um, it's one of, you can either build an email, craft it your own way, right? Or you could take an email you've already written Right. And then email blast it to everybody in your contacts. Right. Um, it's actually really uh, it's a really cool feature. Um, you can send it out. You can send it in drip mode. Has anybody tried drip mode who who uses emails? No one. So I was like, nope. If you, drip mode is like you send 500 at a time. Right. It's like you're testing it. So you're not sending it all at once. It's it's mainly for text messages, I would say. Right. Drip mode. Um Normally with emails, you would just send them all at once, right? All your you know, hundreds of thousands of customers. Does anybody here use any like 
type of email marketing? I know there's a lot out there, right? Like there's a lot of different types of uh, email, email email marketing services. Right? Well, you like, got to sign up for EventHawk because it's way cheaper. So I used to do chimp mail and it was like a huge ripoff. Okay. So chimp mail was just charging way too much. It would charge you for every contact. It was just getting out of control. So I kind of uh, discontinued that and I just do like event hawk because what's it? I forgot. It's like pretty cheap. What's the price on it for sending out an email through that system? Yeah. Do you it's know? Very, it's very, very low. I, I couldn't yeah. tell you like, exactly. It's, it's, it's minimal. You can send yeah, yeah. that emails. Yeah. Because uh, um, if you do like chip mail, that's a ripoff. They like, it could be end up being hundreds of dollars to send out like more and more of the emails you have. And they don't have the text marketing too. So you want somebody that has an all-in-one platform. That's why it's important to have Inflatable Office so it can save all those contacts in there. And then they get zipped right over to Inflatable Office. And then from, I mean, from um, Inflatable Office, they get flipped over to EventHawk onto their program. And then we could just uh, send text messaging and the emails are um, all automated from over there. So that's pretty cool. Absolutely. Right. And what I like um, from my favorite part about like email marketing is if you have the time, right, you have to have the time is scheduling, right? You can schedule emails to be sent out in advance, right? So like if you have like four hours on a Sunday, right, you know, I know it's crazy, but if you have four hours on a Sunday, you could uh, absolutely spend the time and schedule out, you know, emails for the next six months, right? Pick every holiday. Think of your, your sales you're going to have right? Find different images. We have stock images. You can look up images, add them to the email, you know, add a special and then schedule it to go out the day before, the week before. You can schedule it to go out in the morning, in, at night, in the afternoon, um, anything like that. And I know a lot of our clients do that. Like they do a lot of email marketing. Um, and it's fairly simple with uh, the inflatable office um, and the high level system we have here. I wonder what, what, what works better, the uh, text messaging or the email marketing? Hmm. Well, arguably, you, you would think more people would see a text message, right? Because, like, who doesn't have their phone on them all the time, right? So I've actually done a good mix of both um, for Bounce My House, both email marketing and text marketing. Um, what we try to do, try to do is alternate every week so one week i'll send a text blast and then the next week i'll send an email blast um i find that text does a whole lot better especially if you learn how to use trigger links where you can actually track um who's clicking on the link so let's say for example um i'm doing a sale but only on specific bounce houses right and i create a separate page for those bounce houses if in my text, I link them to that category, to that direct page that I want them to see, um, and they click on that link, I'm able to track how many people open it. And then what you can do is you can actually set up an automation. It gets kind of complicated. Tariq definitely helped me out with this. But what you can do is you can set up an automation. So when people click this link, this amount of minutes later, you send a follow-up text. And usually I do something like, um, Ray, I saw you were interested in our Labor Day sale. What date is your event? So I can uh, double check availability. So that has, we have found that out of all the different versions that we've done, this has worked the best and it's been the easiest to track success with as well. So just a little tip there. Um, but to answer the question, from my experience doing this for the past several months, tax blast seem to do a whole lot better than email, but we still want to get emails out there too. Great to know. And trigger links. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to follow up with that later on, so I want to learn more about a little bit more about that, so I can teach that. <laughs> that sounds exciting. Now, there's there's usually depending on who you use. Um, I've done this with other businesses. You have what's called a click rate, which basically is how many that they've opened. You know, when you send the emails, you can see that roughly twenty percent usually, and then mm -hmm. you'll have a click through rate. So that'll show you how many have actually clicked from the emails into the things. Um, I'm not so sure about text messages. I don't know if they're capable of tracking that. I doubt it, but yeah. Um, so that would kind of give you an idea of how effective you are. And I know a lot of times when we would build our, our 
marketing, you try to build it in a way that it's not spammy or clickbaity, but it kind of is because you at least want them to open it, you know, because if you can get, get them to open it, then maybe you can get the next part done because the higher the first one is, the higher the second one has the potential to be, that kind of thing. So I, you, it just really comes down to who's doing your stuff and what they offer and what they're able to track. But when you do campaigns like that, um, you should be able to track all of that. Now, I, you said something about drip campaigns earlier. Mm -hmm. The way I've seen drip campaigns used is usually you, you've got two types. So you've got like the newsletter style, which is, you know, um, every month I release this campaign and then you've got drip campaigns, which says, this is my first time coming and purchasing from you. Maybe it's 2020 and I send you email number one. And then the next time I email you, it's email number two. And then the next time it's email three and then four and so on. And then say somebody else doesn't sign up till 2022. Well, now they get email number one and then email number two. And so that way it's kind of like, this is the next step. This is the next step. And it could be a teaching thing, kind of, this is our product. Have you used it? Um, I've seen it a lot with like the little um, signature platforms where you yeah. sign up and they're like, oh, hey, you can now use this to sign your initials. Or did you know you can sign document, you know, that kind of stuff. And honestly, the one that I'm remembering was really annoying because I got one like every day, but they send the same stuff to everybody, but at different rates because it's based on when you sign up, not this is our current special or whatever. So you can have two different campaigns running at once that way. Oh, wow. And you can really test well, which one works, right? Yeah. Oh, cool. Because one's like lead you into the products and the other one's like, this is our specials. Mm. Okay. And it just shows it just straight shows the specials. Yeah. So like if you've got like a, a November special you're gonna run, you would blast everybody with that. But then say you've got somebody that just signed up to Event Hawk and you're like, Oh, hey, I want them to know this is cool stuff that we offer. They may not even know that we offer that. So I'll send them this email number one that just says, Hey, did you know that by the way we do this? And then email number two would say, Yeah, that way you're not getting them with that analysis paralysis where it's like, We have a hundred things. Why don't you try them all? You know, and they're like, I don't have time for this. For sure. You hit them with it slowly, right? Like, yeah, yeah. And that's why it's a drip because you're just constantly dripping it on there. That makes sense. I, I, you know, that's not the way we use the term, but I like it so much better. Yes. Like, yeah, because you're slowly just, one after another, getting them yeah. all the information they need when they need it, right? Like yeah. when they're thinking about it. Yeah. Very cool. You know, I'm I'm gonna start working on like how to how to set like because you can easily do that like in Event Hawk, like like yeah. in our, in our software, you can easily set that up. Uh oh, I'm gonna work. I'm gonna work with the dev team. See see work work about. How, I'll how be honest. Like when I signed up with this stuff. I didn't know what everything was like I jumped on Facebook and I'm type a so I just like joined every Facebook group everything I could find and like when I ran across event hawk it was like here's forms for insurance stuff and I was like okay cool and I was like I need a platform for for like selling the stuff so I signed up with like ERS over there so I've got like four or five pieces with different places because I didn't realize that you know like event hawk even did all of that and if they'd have had like a drip thing where, you know, I was on their email has been like, oh no, I didn't know they did that. And so I'm, I'm learning as I'm going, like what the different options are and what's here and what's there and, you know, that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm trying to piece everything together right now, but I'm just getting launched on this side of it. So it's, it's been a big learning curve. My biggest thing's been insurance and that's a whole nother issue. Man, absolutely. That, that, that's a whole, that was a whole, that was a whole, uh, uh, round table and and we had we actually had a whole uh webinar on that as well yeah insurance is, is its whole different monster <laughs> yeah i tried to get into that and my phone wasn't working it wouldn't let me sign in and i don't know if you've noticed but i signed in from like three different places tonight just so i could make sure i got it 
I, 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 I did see in the beginning, but yeah, you're good. It's all, I'm glad you're here. Glad you're able to make it. It's all good. I don't know why your phone doesn't like us, but I guess we got to figure it out. I don't know. It, I think it thinks I'm driving when I'm sitting still. Cause it keeps saying you're in safe driving mode. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not driving. I'm sitting on my couch. You know how many people I talk to who are driving? I would argue it happens four times a day, right? <laughs> Where people join Zoom on their on their phone driving, right? Yeah, yeah, in, including you know, my, you know myself, right? One time, one time I did it, right? On my way to work, running a little late, right? Join Zoom on my phone, but yeah, that's weird. I don't, I don't understand why it doesn't like me. Anyway, my audience are mostly Gen X church members friends and family okay okay so what, what is there a question there i don't know i just like i like, like the way it's phrased and then gen z mom adults want a one click and yeah what i mean that um it's just like um they just want to go to the website click what they want and then they leave <laughs> they don't want to click this click that and then everybody's scared I think everybody's like that, though, because I was taught in designing no more than three clicks. If they can't get what they want in more than three clicks, it's too complicated. They'll leave. Absolutely. That's right. why you put your main main attraction on the front page. We have, to op have an optimized website this way, right? People, you know, they know who you are, what you do, and where you are. Right, because that is the three Get family around and do an event, record them having fun. Like you gotta, it. I, I learned so much with this. It, it's not just they see a bouncy house; they want to see how you interact with your company. Mm -hmm. Has Has anyone tried drone shots, like for their bouncy houses yet? Like hired a drone and like, or if they if you have a drone and like flying it over like the top of it, right? That's like the biggest thing right now. I know I've seen a few of our websites for like a few of our, our clients where like you, you go onto their website and it takes you just like you're you're the drone, right? You're flying, yeah. you're flying over the water slide and the bounce house and then you're going down it like you're like the kid and you're flying around it. Like it's really cool. I don't know if anyone, has anybody else tried any, any other like drone anything? No, Any but event, but else. not more so myself. Okay. What's a good drone go for? I mean, like, do you know anything about drones? Or like an easy drone? I thought there used to be one that would follow you around. I suck at drones. I bought two of them. I gave up after it. So I tried flying around. I'm just, I'm horrible. So. Hey, that may be one of those things is worth paying for, man. Yeah, yeah. honestly, there's companies out there, people who, who have really nice 4K drones, and they're really skilled at flying them. And they can really get, like, make really cool videos and stuff. I, I don't know much. I just, I have a few mini drones that my wife got me for fun, right? I could fly in the house. Um, they have a little camera on it that attaches to my phone. It's really cool, right? That's that's it it's as far as I got. Zoel, mm -hmm. dropping the link in the chat. What is this link? Oh my gosh. This is the first one. So there was a mini one for like 300 and then there was like a normal size one for what, like 450, 500, something like that. Oh, you used these before? Uh, yeah. Hey. No, I just well, dropped the link that I that's saw. That's what I'm talking about. Pay hey, that's the way there's a liability there. I don't know. I didn't do my research. They could be trash. But hey, they were paying for Google Ads. They were sponsored. They were at the top of the page. So I clicked them. I uh, said my piece. Love it. <laughs> love it. Man, I, I just make it happen. Like, I, I may be a little too ghetto for this conversation, but <laughs> put it in a good phone case and throw it over the slide. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you when you write like. <laughs> Just make it work, man. Make it work. Right. Just buy like buy a really nice $75 phone case and just like, toss it yeah, back and forth over the, over and the throw thing. The thing. <laughs> yeah. But you say get a ladder. Just climb on a ladder. I mean these friggin' you phones can... cost as much as it's uh that sounds like the phones are more than the friggin' drone. I can spend like twelve hundred dollars on my phone. It's ridiculous. Actually, I <laughs> see people buy a drone and put their phone on it. I'm not even yeah. kidding. Like they'll like they'll they'll like tape it or zip tie it, right? I ain't because tied nothing to my phone. <laughs> my phone is like my life. That's what I have. <laughs> That's go to the pay as you go from Walmart. Walmart. Yeah, I buy everything. Walmart separate. got pay as you go. Stuff. Yeah, they got the pay as you go phones. They're like a hundred bucks. There you oh. go. I have to get one of those. <laughs> Just throw that thing over. Use CapCut. Cut enough pieces together. Make you a video. <laughs> there you go.
That I'll is, make something happen, man. That is one way to do it. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, you were you were talking about um the different basically marketing skills, and you reminded me kind of on the same vein. Um, I went to Coursera a while back and there's free marketing courses out there that'll kind of talk you through how to set your stuff up, what people get into. And I mean, it's completely free. So there's just some, some knowledge that's cheap. I mean, as far as marketing goes, you guys can always hit up like campuses. You could do a um, meetup, the college campuses in the, um, for some reason, all the college campuses around me, they have the boards. Those work out pretty good for me to get like some student um, unions and stuff. I do like an eight by 11 flyer. I put those up every week. And then um, I go to laundromats and I put like um, an eight by 11 flyer on all the bulletin boards. And then I hand out bookmarks to the kids too. And it's just in the student union area. And that works out pretty good for me as well. Hand out free bookmarks, put my advertising on it. So that's how you can go about getting tried and maybe some corporate clients, I guess, from the colleges. Um, and then the meetup is just like different things. I got like putt-putt on there. You get together with a crew of people. Um, just all kinds of different things to kind of network yourself. And they have like even probably network meetings on there as well. So I would, um, you know, check out that app. It's just called Meetup to network with like other business people as well. So, yeah. And I like that bookmark thing because my other business is, is a printing business. So that's mm -hmm. why I've got as much marketing experience as I've got. But yeah. with the bookmarks, one of the things is they don't throw those away. Um, right, right. Magnets or something else. If you've got something that they're not going to get rid of, then your name is going to be driven into their brain over and over and over. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I get the bookmarks for cheap. It's like fifty cents, twenty five cents bookmark. Yeah, that's a good idea. You know, you want you want something basically that they're going to see a lot, and if they're in their book <laughs> study, you know. Right. I think right. they're wrong over there. And I'll usually try to get like the castle, like the color of the school, or if I can. I'll put one of those on there. A lot of the kids like those things. I don't know. So just some different yeah, things. Yeah, kind of, you know, know. Yeah. Like air, so yeah, bookmarks with like your QR code on it, right? Links links them right to your, you know, your main page or link yeah. to okay. your deal page, right? Shows yeah. them all the great deals and all the uh, stuff you have. I know <laughs> QR codes are huge, right? But QR codes are like massive right now. I just, I actually just saw on Instagram uh, the QR, one of the QR code companies just paid like a person five grand to get a QR code tattooed on them. Find you a, what? a, yeah. a group to sponsor too, like um, Future Business Leaders of America or Skills Vica or any of those kind of groups. Throw your stuff on the back with a QR to it. And then you're producing their stuff, but you're basically handing them free advertisement. Speaking my language, I used to be a former teacher myself, and I actually ran an FBLA group myself. So you're speaking my language there. <laughs> I yeah, do I'm a FBLA guy too. I do a gift baskets that when some people ask for a donation, I won't. I don't ever donate bounce house. I just they're a pain in the ass, and I don't feel like I want to set up one for free. So I just do um like sand toys for the uh, in the beginning of the summertime. And I make sure my advertisement all over inside of that. Usually at Walmart, they'll sell those buckets pretty cheap. That's got like the shovel and just a little bunch of little kid toys in it. And I'll uh, I'll buy a bunch of those in the beginning of the summer when they're pretty cheap. They're like five, 10 bucks, some stupid. And then I'll just use those as free giveaways for when people are asking me if I have, you know, something I want to give away as far as entertainment. I'm like, sure, I'll drop off something. So I usually do those and they uh, work out pretty good as far as advertising goes. So you know, put your stickers out on the plastic card or whatever, your name. People usually will take pictures of actual um, baskets. So, I, and uh, I've gotten some work out of from doing that as well, so. Yeah, um, get to, get to Wait more, I got to leave for you too, so I need your information. I got to leave for the uh, builder here. Oh, yeah, from Buffalo? Uh, Nope, it's actually in Chicago, but she got yeah. three different locations and she always do stuff. It's yeah. a daycare. And that's kind of far. She probably won't want to pay me to drive all the way out there. I'm in Buffalo. Don't worry about it. I'll come get the car. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I will, if you think Robin's messing around, she's not. She says something she's going to do. It. No. <laughs> Anything in Chicago, we could, we could meet up on that. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy.
I was I was gonna say good photos are a must, y'all. Like if you don't have good photos for your website of your bounce houses, please either hire a professional photographer, right? Or like and get some really good photos taken and get those on your website, right? Get those on your Google profile, get them everywhere that you are representing your business. Right. If you if you can. Right. If, it, if it's in your budget and you can do it, I, we highly recommend doing it. The better the photo, honestly, uh, the more people are, you know, willing to you know, take a second look at it, to look at it again, to look at the whole thing. Right. Having multiple photos. Like, like I said, the drone. I've seen a lot of drone uh, shots like of 360s, virtual tours. Uh, but yeah, honestly, the better the photo, the better, in my opinion. And has anyone here tried Chat GPT? Anyone? Yeah, but be careful. Don't don't verify your results. Oh, big time, big time. Yeah. You can't you can't just copy and paste it from Chat GPT. In my opinion, you use it as like a good guide, and then you fill it in with your information, right? Uh, I I use it actually all the time for email campaigns, right? When I'm when I need inspiration to write an email campaign, I don't know like you know the best way to start it or end it, but I know what I want to say in the middle, right? But so ChatGPT helped me with that formal beginning, that formal ending, right? And then I know exactly what I'm going to put in the middle. Right? I'm going to put a photo, I'm going to put my special, and I'm going to talk about you know, and then you know I'll you can have it rewrite it, you can rewrite it. I, again, I love it. I use it all the time uh, for my job and for writing email campaigns. Anybody else use it? Like, I know we have a few people who said yes. Again, verify, right? Don't just copy paste it at all. I right, read the whole thing. Read the whole thing. Is it just for emails? No, you can use it for literally anything you want. I have a thread <laughs> that I have had open for seven months now that I've just been feeding information, right? That's helped, it, it helps me with my job. I'm not going to lie. And I wouldn't have even thought of it unless my boss showed me to read, right? And because as a former teacher, ChatGPT is evil, right? It, it helps kids cheat on their homework, right? So I never used it. I, and, and and I was scared, right? So then, when, but Tariq was like, nah, you got to use it, right? You the The longer the paragraphs that you can feed it, the more detail it can spit out, right? So like, I, I just have like full on conversations with chat GPT sometimes. Like I'll, I'll give it three, four paragraphs of information that I'm thinking, and then it'll help me turn it into, you know, what I need or, or give me an idea, right? That'll help me as well, right? But yeah, I, I recommend it. It's for really anything you want. And again, the more you feed it, the better, the better, the, the better the results you're going to get. Like, so like the more detail you can give, like give two paragraphs of detail if you can in your one question, because it will give a very thorough answer. If you ask it to, right. You can say, give me a, you know, one page write up summary of it and it will like that. It's nuts. There, there are things that it really excels at. I use it a lot of times for cheating at code because I can hop in there and I can say, hey, give me a base layout for this type of web page. This is what I want. You know, just like you said, just tell it what it, and then you just go in and you edit a few things because it's faster for me to type that than to sit there and type all the basic code that I'm going to have to type anyways. That works great. If you use it for like word problems with math, no, man, you'll get some really messed up answers. We use it a lot of times for scheduling our girls homeschooling stuff. And it works good for that. You know, it'll, we can build courses for like, um, we were trying to teach our oldest daughter Spanish. And it was like, hey, I need 15 courses with this many words. And it was it was spot on. It was great. But there's some things when you do it, you need to double check it because it's like, uh, that doesn't even make sense, you know? And, you, and it's like, the more you do it on that same prompt, the worse it gets. It just kind of degrades. And it's like, yeah. you know, I just need to <laughs> shut this down and start over. Yeah, basically yeah. New, new thread time. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, well, chat GPT is great, right? Uh, anybody else use anything? I know there's a lot of like social media planners out there. Does anybody use one? I know like, we we you can post you know with within the event hawk software there's a way to make it like 
Uh, you can schedule posts on your Facebook, your Instagram, and your Google business profile, I believe it is. Yep. yep. Um, does anybody use anything else? Like, how do you manage your social media? Like, who has a big social media presence? Anybody in the group? Like, and how do you manage it? Don't let everybody speak. Well, you know, that's where I started. That's how I get all of my rental. So, um, by me not having no help, I maintain everything, um, which is the reason why I joined Event Hoax, because it felt like I was losing my customers and my popularity due to me not being able to ac not even accommodate everybody, check my uh, message requests, get back to those people. So it's plenty of times that I didn't have events, but I had events waiting on me, but mm -hmm. I didn't get back to them in a, in a timely manner. I see. And you just manage it all yourself, don't you? From Instagram, Instagram, Facebook, and Snapchat. Wow. Yeah. I used to use her and even before that's a lot. yeah, even before like my my mutual friends, like mutual, I have five thousand already. I know I know a lot of people. I was in dance groups, um from a party promoter, so I do know a lot of people. Um uh, isn't that, isn't that like the max? Huh? Isn't that like the max amount of friends you can have? Yeah. Want to be my friend? So I gotta find someone to kick out. Give me, give me one second. Anybody can send me a request request from this group. They getting kicked out. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of uh, like we populating over here. Like, um, <laughs> Yelp and Bing. Yelp and Bing is one that you can put your information into. Um, but I wouldn't sign up for like Yelp services because they kind of suck. It's a lot of money, and you don't really get anything out of it. I've tried I tried a couple different times and it was just horrible. But it's good for like getting free referrals and free codes, but like um, you know, I would upload pictures and try to get reviews on there. Um that worked out pretty good. And the Bing Bing is just kind of like um my Google as well. So I would well, recommend signing up for the Bing um you put your business information in there and everything as well. The more search engines you can put your information into, always the better to kind of you know market your website for free if you can put it out there more. So absolutely. Right. I actually, I used to work for Yelp. Right. Um, and um, I would, I would agree it's more for like right, different types of businesses. Right. I would argue the bounce house community, you're not having that many people look on Yelp, but when you do, I would just say, have a profile. Right. Just like, like, like Ray said, like for Bing, for Yelp, for like anything you can just have a fully built profile with up-to-date info and pictures. Right. Because I, for me personally, when I'm looking for something, there's nothing I hate more than looking at a business that's like, it says closed or like, and I'm like, why? Is, like, or I call them and like, I'm like, yeah, I want to do this. And then I call and it's like the, the number line is disconnected. I'm like, what? It's like, I just spent 25 minutes loving this website, doing this. And then I call and it's, and it's dead. All right. So yeah. Anyway. And you were talking about Yelp. Uh -huh. um, you were talking about that other group that had people come in and write one stars on them. I can tell you from experience, I've used this across multiple businesses. Do not sign up with Yelp if you plan on backing out, because once you do, they start hiding your good reviews and they're like, oh, it's just our algorithm. And it's like, well, your algorithm just chose to hide all of my good stuff. And then all they see are the bad ones. You'll start getting really bad review. Like they won't leave you alone. If you got a few minutes, go look up Yelp is a scam. You will see. I'm not joking, man. Like I've, I've learned this the hard way and I'm not just bitter like, cause I didn't pay them for any of this, but it was like a free thing that they set up. And then it just like started trashing our reviews and stuff. So I would highly recommend if you're not going to pay, if you pay them, it's fine. There, as long as you pay for it, Yelp is right there. They'll be like, oh yeah, promoting you and everything. But when you quit paying for it after you've paid for it, that's when the, the landslide starts. So it's better to not ever use them at all. Cause otherwise you just exist as, well, it's some company we don't really know much about versus, oh, yeah, no, they're awful. We, we you know, we wouldn't use them, blah, blah, blah. Try this other company because that's what they do. I mean, that's, Yelp that's is the white page. Yelp is the yellow pages to the community. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> it's but like a yellow page. Yellow pages were at least unbiased. These guys are not unbiased. They They make sure if you're not paying, you look bad because that's what they want. They want your money. Unfortunately, you're right. 
Yep. I don't go off of everybody reviews though. Um, every, everybody is different. You may never know what that customer did to to the company to make them act the way that they act. So my thing is to go through their own website, see what you want, see if you like them, and then you you make your decision. Every yeah, every lot of people review that ain't right. There's a lot of people hmm? that trust them. They trust Yelp. And like I said, Yelp is a scam. Matter of fact, there was a video on uh, Netflix about it a while back, and I was trying to find the title for it, but I can't find it. But it's out there. I mean, you you, you ought to just spend about five minutes just looking up Yelp scam videos. Like, it's it's insane. Good to know. Caution, cautionary tales, y'all. Yeah. Anybody else have anything to add? This has been one of my favorite uh, round, uh, you know, roundtable discussions. Uh, in my, it's been my favorite. Brandy, ever. you always say that. No, nah, I do not, Robin. Don't be lying. <laughs> <laughs> but she right. She right. She called me out. She called me out. It's it's true. It's true. It's but you know what? It's true every time, Robin. It is. It's it because is. More and more people are joining the conversation. So I remember, like, like last time I did it. We had maybe 35 people in here and maybe four people talk, maybe three, right? So it was like a, a whole room full of people not, not talking, right? Here, we've, we've had five, six people joining the discussion. The chat has been great. I, I just appreciate it. That's all. I appreciate, I appreciate the community coming together and just, you know, looking out for each other. It's awesome. And with that being said, everybody... Have a wonderful week, and I will see at uh, y'all next week, right? At the next roundhouse discussion. I'm not sure the I'm not sure the um the topic next week, but I'm sure um it's gonna be another fun one.